Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to our training series on how to make an add-on in Blender and this is part three of our training series. So in this lesson, we are going to be adding a panel to our add-on. In the previous lesson, we just added the functionality of seeing the add-on, of being able to search or list the add-on within the add-ons list. And uh, if you want the project files, you can get them from, uh, from my Patreon page. Just become a patron and uh, you can get them directly there. It's also a nice way to support the channel and making sure that I can, I'm able to continue doing this. This is the previous file we had, we had worked on. And what we're going to do is add a panel like, like you see this here. It will have a name and it will be collapsible. And uh, we can have multiple panels as you can see, but we are going to start with one like this and uh, maybe add a render button and a few settings and that's it. So let's dive in and uh, go back to Visual Studio or whatever editor you're using. You can see that uh, we have a print statement and uh, we're going to leave this in. And uh, for now, we're just going to keep everything in a single file. Uh, that way it's easy to explain. But uh, later, we are going to follow the same structure that I have for the add-on I'm working on. I will going to create a UI panel and then have the code that runs the UI panel in there. You will also have a UI buttons a Python file that will contain all the buttons that we create or operators that we create for our add-on. But for now, we're going to keep things simple. And maybe at the end of the lesson, I will move, transfer all the classes that we have created into a new file called UI panel and UI buttons. So if we go to the structure, let's go to the UI panel. To define a panel, you just need uh, to create a class that inherits from the BPY types dot panels. So as I said, this is not a, a training series about Python. It's just a training series about Blender. So I'm not going to explain what a class is. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube uh, that explains classes much, much better than I'll do here. Just know that uh, you, you just need to create a class like this uh, that inherits from the BP, uh, BP types panel. And uh, you also inside that you just need these details uh, to describe what that class is. Uh, how you are going to call it and uh, how Blender will reference to that class, uh, where that panel is going to be for this one, it will be in the view 3D and uh, the type of the panel, which is UI, and then the name of the panel or the category of the panel. And uh, then uh, this draw function, which, which places everything onto the UI. Okay, so let's get to that. So I'm going to open up the project file. And uh, we're going to, as I said, we're going to do everything here. And I'm just going to copy directly here. There's no need uh, to get it from my head. So first thing you need to do is import uh, the Blender Python API. Otherwise, everything else would, will not work. Everything else was working uh, before because we were, we were not using anything that is related to the Blender API. You can see these are just normal Python functions. I uh, was just using a print function, a print statement. Uh, inside our register function, we have just uh, set up ourselves. So we had not used anything uh, relating to the Blender API, including the Blender info is also just built in Python functionality. It's not part of the Blender API. That's why the, that's why the add-on runs without any problems, without importing the API. But now we are starting to use uh, the Blender Python API. Uh, so let's import that first. So import BPY, and then let's create a class Again, I'm not explaining what a class is. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials that can explain this. Just give it a name. I'm just going to call it what I call it here, main panel, and uh, it inherits and uh, it inherits from BPY dot types dot panel. You need to type it as it is here. Otherwise, you need to have this in so that Blender knows that this is an actual panel, and uh, you can type in this info as well. You need to make sure that uh, the Blender ID name is different for every add-on, for every class you make, uh, because this is what Blender uses to, to reference to this class. And uh, if you have two add-ons that share the same class names, uh, they will be contradicting each other and uh, they might crash Blender or crash the add-on itself. So let's call this, you can see that I'm adding some, my own notation. So I use EVX for, as a short form for Ismail's VFX. So that's why you see that I'll put this in every add-on that I create. So that even if you load in an add-on from someone else who named their classes, their class ID names in the same way that I do, it is rare that they will start with this uh, suffix uh, EVX. That's just for me to make a unique suffix data or prefix uh, that is going to be unique for all my add-ons or my classes. So you can use whatever you want. So I'm just using my prefix and then uh, the, yeah, this is just, 
to know that this is relating uh, to the home builder. Uh, but since this is just, I'm just going to call this add-on and then P PLT. So this is just a, no a naming convention that Blender, that the Blender API uses for the uh, Blender ID name. So just follow that. Everything below the PT layout can be whatever you want it, but uh, just make sure that it follows uh, this here. And then space types, you can always go to Google and search for the Blender, Blender API. I uh, just type in BPY and then uh, you just type in Blender uh, 2. Point or whatever version you are working with. So 2.3 BPY uh, for the Blender API and uh, it should bring you, it should bring you uh, the documentation on that API and you can read about whatever you're working on here. So for example, if I want to know more about uh, the BL space, I just go into, paste it in the search area and uh, Blender should give me some details about that. And uh, let's see what we can see. And you can see all the different types of spaces. So this is uh, the space where the add-on is going to be added. And so you can see we have the empty, I uh, have view, view 3D, view editor, non-editor, sequence editor, clip editor. So these are the view spaces uh, that you're seeing here that are listed uh, here. And see view 3D, image editor, view editor. And uh, if you change between one another, you see the, the you see the actual type of editor that you have changed here in the uh, console, I don't know, the info window here. And I can see that uh, we want the add-on to appear in the 3D view. And uh, that's why, uh, let's go back to the scripting. That's why that uh, if you go to the 3D view, you can see uh, the name of this window is called the 3D view. So that's why I'm adding that there. So that Blender knows that I want the add-on to be showing in the 3D view. And it uses the name uh, capital letter view slash 3D. And then it's a region type UI. Uh, so it will know that uh, it's going to be in the UI section of uh, that 3D view. And the category is what this, this, these here are the categories. So every add-on you see listed here or every panel you see listed here will have uh, this type of class. And uh, the category here is the actual uh, panel that you're clicking on here. So for ours, we are going to call this we are going to call this um, Blender add-on. And now from there, we are going we need to call a draw function. So dev within our class, so dev draw. When you start working on add-ons, you will realize that it's very hard to memorize every piece of code you need to write. So that's why you see that I'm always referring back to the add-on I created. I, or you can always go to Google and search how to make uh, a UI panel, a UI panel. And just make sure I add BPY and the Google will know to filter out everything else. So it will give it will give you examples of how you can create UIs, and uh, there are usually good tutorials about how to do that. And uh, you can just copy, uh, follow the pieces of code uh, that are listed here. You can see how you can easily define it. You need uh, to create the class following this structure, and then create a add a draw function uh, that takes in the argument self and context. I'll explain this later, uh, but uh, you just need to follow that structure. And uh, then you may not get this your first time, but uh, as you develop more and more add-ons or more examples, everything will start to click little by little uh, because it's, it's a bit difficult to explain everything without turning a two minutes video into a 20 minute video. So that's why you see that uh, some things I'm just going to brush over, but uh, they will start to, you start to pick up on what they are or what, how they work when you make more add-ons but uh, even the best developers or programmers just do a lot of copying and pasting and that's what our blender add-on development is all about we're going to be reusing a lot of code uh, just it's about understanding how that code works and sometimes you don't even know how it works but uh, later as you develop more add-ons you start to pick up some of that uh, that structure and how everything works so we are going to follow this structure and uh, the blender also has if you just subdivide this and uh, bring the text editor you can also look through different templates if you go to the template section i uh, say you wanted to create a simple ui panel you can see how the structure is here and just copy from that because it's going to be very difficult for you to memorize every piece of code here uh, so you might want to need you might need somewhere to copy some of this code from another tip that i could give you if you see something you want to use here, so say you want to add a slider like this in your panel, uh, there is an easy way to find that the code that runs this code here. Uh, so if you go to your interface and turn on developer extras, 
which I ha already have on, and Python tooltips. It will turn your interface so that whenever you hover over any piece of interface, it gives you this tooltip uh, that tells you the code and uh, the, the line of code uh, that is running that, that interface tool. Or if you right click on it, especially if you have the developer tools, the developer extras turned on, if you right click on it and see edit source code, it will open up the Python that is running that piece of code. And I, I stress this out that uh, it's actually opening up the actual Python that is running, the actual Python file that is running that piece of code. So if you make any changes to this, it may break Blender. So don't make any changes to, to the piece of code you see you see here. So you can see that it has opened up properties output.py. Uh, this is a file within the Blender file structure. So make sure you don't make any changes to it. Just may use it as a way to see what is running or what is any line of code you're using here. So for example, if I want to see how this color thing is working, I just right click and then edit source and it should take me uh, to that. Here, you, I'm just, this is using a layout template node view and, uh, it's, and uh, it's taking in some inputs uh, from somewhere here. So this is, this node tree, uh, this node is being defined here. Uh, the node tree is being defined here. So you can uh, reverse engineer whatever you see, whatever code you see here into your add-on and uh, make it work. Uh, so uh, I'll show you how to place, uh, to copy this code and put it in your add-on. But for now, let's first make sure that uh, our add-on actually comes up in the panel. So let's expand this back and uh, just go back, add-ons, yes, and uh, bring back our, yeah, so we need to create a draw function. So draw and uh, it takes self, and uh, and uh, it also takes context. And let me just add a pass. So if you don't have any code written inside your function, Python will give you an error. But if you don't really have anything to add there, what we can do is just write pass and uh, Python will just ignore anything below that. But uh, just to show you when this function is called, I'm just going to add a print statement and add panel being rendered and I'm going to change the label to blender add-on again it's going to be in the view 3d and UI so right now if we refresh the add-on or if we undo the add-on okay so we are having a few issues uh, if I just, so if you're copying code from a different from a website or from a different file always make sure that uh, you're using the, the same indication in your code so right now I'm getting this error uh, let me just open up my console window also, you see, I'm getting this error, inconsistent use of tabs and spaces. Uh, that's because that uh, because I copied this, I copied this from a different file. Uh, the tabs are not are not consistent. So I'm using spaces here, and here I'm using uh, the tab key to add uh, the tabs. So to get rid of that error, if you're using micro, if you're using uh, Visual Studio, just hit F1 and type in convert indentations to tab. I just select everything and then if F1, type in convert indentations to tabs and uh, that should change all your indentations uh, to tabs and that should get rid of uh, the error. Unexpected indentation. So let's see what, okay, so I'm adding, there is a two here that is not supposed to be there. So everything is fine. I just need to, and you can see the add-on works fine, but uh, we're still not seeing the panel yet because we have just created the class but not registered it. So in Blender, every class you create has to be registered. So there is a register function for classes that you need to add into the overall register functions. So to do this, I'm just going to copy that from my original file and uh, it's just, uh, let's go to the panel. I think it's under my functions. The way I structured my files is just, is that uh, I register all the classes in the functions and the properties panel under the register function, which I call when the register function is called when the Blender add-on is enabled or disabled. So we're just going to need a register function. So let, for that, let me just find uh, that. And you can see we only we need a register class and uh, unregister class function. So I'm just going to copy this. Then I'm going to paste it. Uh, we are going to organize everything into different modules so, so that we clean up our code. But uh, for now, just to make things simple, after the print statement, I want Blender to register this class. So I'm just going to, this is the name of the class. So I'm just going to paste that there. 
So if you have multiple classes, you would you would need to create multiple lines, and uh, this would be panel two, panel three, panel four. Or what you could do is uh, say we have to let's just first sh let me first show you how this would work before I add on more panels. So I'm just going to copy this, and uh, this time instead of uh, the register class, I'm just going to use unregister. Again, I'm not going to, uh, to explain everything about this API because there's a lot to explain. Just know that uh, this line here registers the tells Blender to register this panel or add it to the user interface. And that uh, this line here removes that from the interface after the add-on is disabled. So whenever an add-on is enabled in Blender, Blender re calls this function and this function will run any code uh, that is in the inside here. So the first line of code is going to run is this print statement and then this code which adds the panel, this panel we have just created, onto the interface. And then when you disable the add-on, it runs, Blender runs this function which will run this line and then run the unregister function. So let's try this out and see how it's going to work. So again, let's look at uh, this here, the interface. We'll just extend it here. So unregister, uh, the unregister function is done, and then register. You can see that, let me actually first disable all the add-ons that I have here, uh, just so we can see everything. So I have the, with just only this piece of code, we, we are able to add the panel to our UI. So let's again call the Blender add-on. You can see we now have this in there. And uh, as I said, when you register the add-on or when you enable the add-on, it will run this piece of code. So let me first disable this. If I enable it, you can see that the first thing it does it is run this code, which just runs this piece here, which just prints a Blender add-on loaded, uh, which is this line here, and then runs this function here, which calls or, which calls or draws uh, the panel onto uh, the user interface. And uh, within this panel, there is a draw function, print, uh, panel is being rendered. And uh, this runs every time you move your cursor over the panel, inside uh, the panel here. But because we don't have anything inside the panel, uh, we are not seeing any print statements here. And uh, Brenda has froze for some reason. So you will experience this a lot uh, when you're creating an add-on. Now this is another good reason to count, to use a uh, separate IDE other than the uh, the text editor that comes within Blender because if Blender crashes, you might lose your work uh, because uh, that is tied, whatever add-on, whatever code you have written within the text editor is tied to the Blender file that you are working on. So it's better to separate these files so that whenever Blender crashes, you don't have to worry about losing your work. So in the next lesson, we'll look at adding a button here that we can press maybe and uh, print something in the console or do something in a viewport. Thank you.